We have seen how to model both the object detections and the clutter detections. And it is time to study how we can use those models to obtain a measurement model. To do this, we will introduce data association hypotheses and learn about a very commonly used trick to express complicated distributions. The objective in the next two videos is to present a measurement model. And with this, we refer to a distribution of zk given xk that we can use in base rule to perform the update step. To construct the measurement matrix zk, we randomly shuffle all the column vectors in ok and ck. And we would like to use the models for ok and ck to obtain a model for zk. As you may recall, an object is detected with probability pd of xk and then generates a measurement from gk of ok given xk. And it is undetected with probability 1 minus pd of xk. That is, the matrix capital OK contains a single vector, lowercase OK, with probability PD of XK, and it is an empty matrix with probability 1 minus PD of XK. Also, the clutter matrix capital CK contains MKC measurements, where MKC is Poisson distributed with mean lambda bar C, and the measurements are independent and identically distributed according to the spatial PDF FC. So, how can we use these models to find a model for zk? Well, there are two things that make this challenging. The first is that the width of zk is random. That is, not only does it contain random elements, but the size of the matrix is also random. The second is that we don't know which, if any, measurement in the matrix zk is an object detection. If we could condition on the width of zk being, for instance, 5, and that, say, the second vector is an object measurement, it would be simple to describe the distribution of the vectors in the matrix, since the second vector would have the PDF GK, and all the other vectors would be clutter measurements, distributed according to FC. But we can't just condition on information that we don't have. It turns out that we need to consider all possible associations between measurements in ZK and the object. To understand this, let us introduce some notation. To make the notation slightly more compact, we omit the time index k, both in this video and the next. We use theta to denote the data association. If theta is equal to zero, then the object is undetected, and all vectors in z are clutter measurements. If theta instead takes a positive value i, then the ith vector in z is an object measurement. For instance, suppose the measurement matrix contains three vectors, and that theta is equal to 2, then that means that the second measurement vector, z2, is an object measurement, whereas the other two vectors are clutter measurements. As you can see, we've illustrated a measurement matrix with three vectors in this figure, and if theta is equal to 2, this measurement would be an object measurement. If instead theta is equal to 0, the object is undetected, and all three measurements in the matrix z are clutter detections. We mentioned earlier that it is complicated to express the distribution of z, since it has a random width and since the data association is unknown. To simplify things, we will therefore introduce the variables m and theta, where m defines the width of the matrix and theta is the data association variable. If we could condition on both of these variables, it would be simple to express the distribution. But we first need to figure out how to correctly include them in the distribution. As a first step, we introduce m. This step is identical to when we introduced mkc to express the distribution of ck in the last video. And the value of the distribution does not change when we include m. Like I mentioned in the previous video, we will elaborate on this step on the homepage, but intuitively speaking, the equation holds because m represents the number of vectors in z, which was in some sense already present from the start. As a second step, we use the law of total probability to introduce theta. In this case, that law tells us that the joint distribution of z and m can be found from the joint distribution of z, m, and theta by marginalizing or summing over all possible values of theta. We have managed to introduce the two variables, m and theta. That distribution can now be factorized into two factors, where the first factor is the one that we were aiming to get, namely the distribution of z, when we condition on both theta and m, in addition to the state x. 
We have argued that this distribution should be easy to express. Apart from that factor, we obtain a second factor that does not contain z, which is the distribution of m and theta given x. We will refer to this as our prior on m and theta, since it is the distribution of these variables before observing z. Fortunately, it's relatively straightforward to express both of these distributions. And by doing this, we find a complete measurement model that we can use in our filters. In the next video, we will find an expression for the joint distribution of z, m, and theta, given x, and obtain a compact expression for the measurement model. Before that, I'd like to remark on what we did on this slide. The basic ID is very widely used and therefore important to know about. A general description is that we have a distribution which is complicated to express, but managed to identify some variables that would simplify things for us if they were known. In this case, it was the number of measurements m and the data association variable theta. In other situations, these variables could represent how many objects that are present in the scene or the intention of a driver when a vehicle enters an intersection. Once we have identified these variables, we use the law of total probability to include them. In this case, it looks like we've introduced m in a different manner, but a deeper analysis tells us that this can also be viewed as an application of the law of total probability. What you've seen here is therefore a special case of a general and important trick.